and just push you to the limit. Just to have someone who understands what we're going through just feels, to me, really great. So thank you. Thank you. I, I, I'll take that as a compliment, but could I, could I also say uh, nobody goes into education in any sector uh, to get wealthy. Nobody becomes a teacher to go. I just suddenly thought of Eddie Groves and his wife, and it's a kind of <laughs> nasty yeah, thought yeah, that went through my mind. But nobody, nobody, nobody goes into being a teacher uh, to get wealthy. But that doesn't mean, and should never mean that we don't respect what they do uh, and that we don't reward what they do with a wage that is proportionate to the difficulty of what they do and a wage that enables them to live a good life. Uh, I, I've been committed to that uh, for the last 30 years and I, remain, I will remain committed to that as long as I'm in politics. Me again. <laughs> this I'm going to address to all of the um, ministers today. I'm an early childhood educator who's worked for 30 years with families and children in all different socioeconomic spaces. I wonder if any of you know how long it takes us to get a parent to one acknowledge that the child that they gave birth to, who's perfect, <laughs> has a disability or some issues going on that needs help. And then do you know how long it takes for us to convince them to get additional help? Do you know how long it takes for a person in a disadvantaged area to get access to community services such as speech or an OT or a psychologist? Because mental health now is well and truly on the agenda. So my question is, do you understand the dance before a child turns four, before we hothouse them and send them off to school? Because it doesn't start at four, it starts at birth. And for early childhood educators, when we don't get those children at two, and we get them at three, if they're disadvantaged, but if we have to wait until they're four, I'm sorry, two years down the track when they're six, they may get vision screening, they may get a speech pathology, they may get an OT to help and support them. So my question is, do you, any of you understand that that's the actual story that has been happening for 30 years? Look, I, I can't. Yeah. It's, a, it's a really good question. I thank you for the passion that it was it was addressed with. Uh, I don't is the answer. I mean, I know I know the numbers. I know the difficulty. I've heard lots of stories uh, and lots of concerns raised. It's one of the reasons why I arm wrestled the former education minister Verity Firth to keep open the Penrith uh, Autism Preschool, preschool specifically for autism kids. Um, uh, and it's also the other side of what you're saying, the, 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 the evidence-based side of what you're saying is early intervention works. Absolutely. And the earlier you identify a, a special need and address that special need, the better things were going to be for that child, for the school that that child goes into and for the society that that child inherits. Uh, whether it's vision, whether it's, whether it's hearing, uh, whether it's a physical disability or whether it's an intellectual disability, an emotional disturbance, or uh, or a, a, a matter of autism. It's or in any case, any all of those uh, early intervention. There's almost nothing we can do directly about parents, um, uh, other than to try and, and. I think this is this is happening. It's happening very slowly to change societal attitudes to disability and special needs. To begin the discussions earlier with parents uh, and to. To, and, and, and on a, not just individual parents, but all parents, we need to have that, that yes, your child is perfect, but your child is going to benefit from uh, some, some, some special attention, from some additional resources being directed to them. The second problem you referred to is the issue of diagnosis and specialist skills outside of the education sector. Uh, you know, this is universal. This goes all the way from, from birth to, to year 12. High school teachers, primary school teachers, preschool teachers are all struggling to get those, you know, whether it's occupational therapy, whether it's uh, vision assessment, there just isn't enough of it to go around and there's not enough money to do it. And then finally, where a child needs additional resources or a placement, uh, and I'm, you know, I, uh, this, this is an ongoing fight, battle, debate I've had with both Labor and the Coalition, 
uh, is that with special needs in all sectors of education, we need to start with the need and work backwards to the budget. Uh, and the problem for governments is that the budget for, for special needs has doubled. Uh, is it eight years? Seven years. It's been doubling every seven years. Uh, uh, and Treasury takes one look at it and says, no, you've got to turn, you've got to stop that happening. It's not doubling because, as, as you well pointed out, I'm glad you said this in the presence of the Minister and somebody who may be in the next Cabinet, uh, or somebody who definitely will be in the next Cabinet one way or another. Um, I'm glad you said that because it, it needs to be understood. This is not overdiagnosis. This is not parents who want their children to have special... There is enormous, enormous drag on getting a child diagnosed to the point where they're ready for resources. Getting through that drag is not something teachers do lightly because it's a lot of work. But once they're through that drag, for goodness sake, can we all agree that we need to provide the resources, the placements, the support, the specialist support for those children in preschools, in primary schools, in secondary schools and in TAFE? Um, I have a, a point of uh, very answer is yes. Um, absolutely. Uh, and three three points I'll make very briefly because we are seven minutes from 7.30. Um, first of all, I would go further than what you've said, is very often those issues for those children do not start when they're born. It actually starts one generation, two generation, even three generations prior. Um, and that's what the work of Vincent, uh, Tony Vincent, told us. Entrenched disadvantage, entrenched poverty uh, leads to many of those issues over generations. And I can say that from life experience, but I can also say it from being the Minister for Community Services for the period that I was. There was not one child death or one dreadful incident, not one that didn't have a history of that child's parents, grandparents, and a couple of case, cases, great-grandparents. So it starts well before. Uh, the second thing that I would say is that, um, and it's a, it's a bit of a plea for parents. I mean, my son's just turned 30, for God's sake. Um, still at home, but moving out on child in the next month. I haven't takes the dog with him, but, um, you know, he, he really struggled at school. Um, and I was a pretty attentive parent. He's just finished go, uh, year 12 at TAFE to find out that he had a learning challenge or a learning difficulty, and I didn't know about it, and I'm not, I'm not neglectful. So sometimes there, that does happen. And the final thing that I would say is that, and you can't expect state governments to pick up where the Commonwealth drops the ball all the time. And I am outraged that the Common Commonwealth Government is seen fit to either close or are going to close those fanta fantastic child and family centres. Um, I think the Benevolent Society or <coughs> United Care was, was running the one up in, two up in Queensland? Oh, no, no, in New South Wales. In New South Wales, I visited the one in Queensland. The Benevolent. And the Benevolent, yeah, and I just, think they are an amazing model, they're expensive initially, but the fact that they're not being valued seems to me to be an abrogation of responsibility. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, should, um, we are going to wrap it up so um, we can hand over to um, Bernadette for the closing remarks, but before I do I just wanted to grab John and say thank you very much for coming and your support to the campaign. <laughs> And now I'd just like to welcome Bernadette Dunn, who's the Chair of the Community Child Care Co-op, up for some closing remarks. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to start off by thanking uh, Minister Piccoli, the Honourable Linda Burney, and the Honourable Dr John Kay for coming along this evening and uh, responding so eloquently to your questions. I'd also like to thank um, Trish and uh, Chris and Rebecca for such comprehensive summaries. It's been really heartening sitting here listening to all of our guest speakers speak to and acknowledge the benefits of preschool and early childhood education. And I'd like to thank the Minister for delivering on some of the requests to date, and I'd like to acknowledge the work of the previous government in the early childhood space. Um, and it's wonderful to hear the commitment to the upholding the, the NQF. 
I also have to say a huge thank you for the invitation and encouragement to keep on lobbying. And we accept that <laughs> wholeheartedly and we'll, and we'll do our best. And so um, I guess what I'd like to say in, in, in following that lobbying cue is in that all of your deliberations and planned announcements between tonight and the elections that you remember the salient points discussed this evening. The high cost of preschool fees in New South Wales, the low funding levels to preschools in New South Wales, the low participation rates in New South Wales, the three to four year old enrolment challenge, and obviously the issues around remuneration and qualification. And um, I have to put a plug in for $4,000 is really a very reasonable amount to invest in each child. So we're not actually asking for jam and cream with our cake. We're asking just for a bigger slice of that cake. <laughs> the slice of that cake that is the right of every child in New South Wales. So thank you everyone for coming. Um, I'd like to thank the staff of Community Childcare for helping to organise this evening's event. Um, and um, Children's Services Forum New South Wales. So thank you.